The second part of the question asks, how high does the ball get? In other words, what's the maximum height? What is the x value at its maximum height? So it's asking for something different than this 5 meter mark. This is asking for something very different. Well, it's a whole different problem, kind of. So let's think about, let's go back to our variables and think about what can we keep and what can we not keep. Is the initial uh, x naught still zero? Yes. Is x five meters? Well, no, no, that is not correct anymore. So we can't use that to solve for the second part. V naught, is that still 20 meters per second? Yes, it is. It's still 20 meters per second initially. V, is that still uh, plus or minus 17.4 meters per second? No, it's not. But let's think about this for a second. The question is, what it's the, where is it at its highest point? What happens at its highest point? This is extremely important. Well, if we think about it, as the ball is going up, at its highest point, its highest point is where it turns around. It stops moving upward and starts going downward. In other words, it stops having a positive velocity and starts having a negative velocity. Well, how can it go from positive to negative? What does it have to have right in between it going from positive to negative? It has to be zero. This is a very, very important concept. When something reaches its maximum value in position, its maximum position, let's say, in this case, when it turns around, it stops moving instantaneously for just an instant, an infinitesimal instant. It is stopping and then starting moving the other way. So at the very peak of the motion, what is V? V is zero. That's what defines the peak of the motion, where the velocity is zero. It's turning around and changing from having a positive velocity to a negative velocity. Very, very good. Acceleration still negative 9.80 meters per second squared? Yes. Time still this? No. These are different. But I don't want to erase these. I will just put these into parentheses. So let's remember these times do not apply to this problem anymore. But I want to be able to come back to look at those numbers. There we go. We've got a new problem here. And what are we looking for? how high we're looking for, what is the height, what is x. So in this case, we're looking for x. Great, let's go back to the equations. Okay, here we go. Let's figure out what equation we want to use. Let's remember, we are looking for x, and we know x naught, v naught, v a, but we do not know t. Can we use the first equation? No, it does not have an x in it. Can we use the second equation? No, it's got a t in it. It's got an x in it, which is good, but it's got a t in it, and we don't know t. Number three, can we use that to solve for x? Again, it's got an x in it, but it's got t. Number four, there we go. We could use number four. We can solve for x, and there is no t in it. So let's use number four to solve for um, x. Let's do a little quick uh, simplification here. We've got x naught is equal to zero, so that's zero. We have v is equal to zero, so that is zero. Now what do we get? We have zero equals v naught squared. So that will be 20.0 meters per second squared plus two times a, negative 9.80 meters per second squared times x. There we go. Now, let's, how are we going to solve this for x? Let's bring this to the other side. Divide by the 2 times 9.8. What's 2 times 9.8? That's 19.6. So, bringing this over here, we'll have x equals 20.0 meters per second quantity squared divided by 19.6 meters per second squared. And what do we get? Multiply that out, and we find that x is equal to 20.4 meters. And there we go. That is our answer, 20.4.
20.4 meters. Excellent. But before we finish with this one, one more thing I want to think, think about. What is T? We are not asked for T in this problem, but let's just calculate it. Let's see what we get. Let's put in, um, uh, let's put in V, V naught, and A, and let's use this to calculate T. We're not asked to do it, but let's just do it anyways. So solve for T, bring V naught over here, divide by A, and we have that T is equal to V minus V naught over A, and, oh, I didn't do what I usually do. V is equal to zero. So what do we end up with? We have negative V naught, negative 20, 0 0.0 meters per second, divided by A, A is negative 9.80 meters per second squared. The negatives cancel. That's good. That's going to give us a positive time, which is what we would expect. If you end up with some negative time or something like that, you need to think about why uh, you have a negative time. Does it make sense? In this case, it would not make sense. A negative time would be a time before the ball was thrown. Is the ball at the peak before it's thrown? No. So we know we've got to have a positive time. So 20 divided by 9.8, and then we've got meters per second divided by meters per second squared, or multiplied by seconds squared per meter. Meters cancel, one of the seconds cancels, and we end up with seconds. Let's divide this out, and what do we get? We get 2.04 seconds. In other words, it takes 2.04 seconds for the ball to get up to this 20.4 meter height, but that, notice, is exactly what we had over here, that 20.4, uh, 2.04 seconds, which is just what we thought. That must be the time to get to the peak, and then it actually passes the 5 meter mark at 1.78 seconds before that, 1.78 seconds after that. Excellent. Very, very good. Let's try one more problem. Last problem for the day. While visiting the top of the Washington Monument, which is 427 meters tall, Brittany notices her physics professor on the ground below. Brittany tries to get his attention by dropping a rock on the professor's head. Not a very good way of getting someone's attention. How long will it take the rock to fall, and how fast will it be moving when it hits his head? Let me push this up a little bit so we can see it. Assume Brittany's professor is 2.00 meters tall and ignore air resistance. Okay, very good. So we've read the problem. Let's draw a picture. So here we go. Uh, we've got the Washington Monument. Here's Brittany uh, dropping a rock. Here's her professor down here. The height of the Washington Monument, 427 meters. Height of the professor when the rock hits his head, two meters. Anything else uh, to put on the diagram? Ignore air resistance. Okay, I think that's pretty much it for our diagram. Oh, uh, one thing. Um, tries to by dropping a rock. So she drops the rock. Now, when you drop something. What does that mean? It means you're just letting go of it. So what's the initial speed or the initial velocity of something if you just release it? Well, if you just release it, the initial velocity is zero. So it's kind of like saying from rest. So what we know is that the initial velocity of the rock is zero. Okay, great. Let's keep that in mind. What next? Let's write down our variables. So what do we have? Oh, sorry, uh, let's choose our coordinate system before we write down the variables. Now, in this case, the rock is being dropped from up here and is then moving downward. We could set the origin down here at the ground. We could set the origin up here. We could put it wherever you want. We could put it at the ground level and have it going, uh, uh, just for the sake of something different, let's put it up at the initial position of the rock. Or maybe for something different, let's not put it at the initial position of the rock. Let's put it down here at the ground level, and we'll say upward is positive. Okay, we can do it that way. All right, there we go. Now, what are the variables? We've got x naught, 
X, V naught, V, A, T. X naught. What is the initial height of the ball? From the ground, the, our origin is at the ground, the initial position of the ball will then be a uh, rock 427 meters. Final position. The final position of the rock is 2 meters above the ground when it hits his head, so x will be 2 meters. V naught, as we said, because the rock is dropped, the initial velocity will be 0. Final velocity, we don't know how fast it's traveling when it hits his head. A, again, acceleration downward, 9.80 meters per second squared. Upward is positive, so the acceleration is again negative, 9.80 meters per second squared. T, how much time does it take? We don't know. All right, the question, how long will it take the rock to fall? Well, what is how long will it take? What is the T? And how fast will it be moving when it hits his head? So what is V? Okay, there we go. Let's put the equations back up. Okay, here are the equations. We're looking for V and T. What do we want to solve for first? Well, we can pick whatever we want. Um, why don't we solve for V first in this case? Can we use the first equation? No, because it's got a T in it and we don't know T. Can we use the second equation? No, again, it's got a T in it, but we don't know T. Both of the first and second have a V in it, but we don't know what T is. Can we use the third? No, because there's no V in it. The fourth? Yes, we can use the fourth, and there's no T in it, so we know everything in it. We can use that to solve for V. Very good. What do we have? We've got that, let me simplify this a bit, V naught is zero. So we have that V squared is equal to 2 times A, negative 9.80 meters per second squared, times X. X is 2 meters, minus X naught, which is 427 meters. Notice, 2 minus 427, that's going to be a negative number. And a negative number times a negative number is a positive number which equals v squared. v squared has to be a positive number. v squared cannot be a negative number. We can't take the square root of a negative number. It's not, v is not going to be a, an imaginary number. So, and that looks good. That works out. The signs work out well. So we think at least we're on the right track. We multiply this out. We take the square root. And what do we get? Well, when you take the square root, anytime you take the square root, you can have a positive or a negative square root. So let's put both of those down. And what do we get? We get plus or minus 91.3, and the units are meters per second. We've got meters here multiplied by meters per second squared is meters squared per second squared, which we then take the square root, leaving us with meters per second. We've got two possible solutions here plus or minus 91.3. Which one goes along with our problem? Well, we are looking for the situation where the rock is moving downward and hits the professor's head, so we actually want the negative solution here. The, the velocity will be negative 91.3 meters per second. The problem, I think, actually asks how fast will it be moving, so we can actually just say it will be moving 91.3 meters per second. It didn't actually ask for the velocity, which would include the positive or negative to indicate the direction. Just how fast is basically just means the speed. What's the speed? So there we go. At least in this case, we know that we want the negative number, and then the speed would be 91.3 meters per second. What is t? Well, we could use number 1 for t, but we would have to use v. We could use number 2 for t, but we would have to use v. We could use number 3 for t, but we would not have to use v. Why don't we do that? Why don't we solve for uh, equation number 3 and solve for t? And what do we get? Well, let's just simplify a little bit. We've got v naught is equal to 0, and nothing else is 0. So what do we have? We've got x, which is 2 meters, equals x naught, which is 427 meters, plus 
one half a negative 9.80 meters per second squared times t squared and we can solve that for t, t. We don't need to use the quadratic equation. We can bring this over here, which will give us 2.00 meters minus 427 meters, and then divided by uh, uh, negative 9.8 times a half is negative 4.9, so we get negative 4.90 meters per second squared, and that equals t squared. Again, this will be a negative number. Divided by a negative number is positive. We take the square root and we will get a positive and negative number. Let's write both of those down. What do we get? We get plus or minus 9.31 seconds. 9.31 seconds. Plus or minus. Again, why do we get a positive and negative answer here? What answer do we want? Well, we want the positive answer. But let's just think, why would we get a negative answer? Well, I know we got a negative answer because we took the square root, but the equations are always trying to tell us something, and we need to be careful to listen to what they're telling us. What they're saying is that there are two possible times when the rock would end up at two meters high. One is the positive time of 9.31 seconds. But why is it telling us negative 9.31 seconds? What does a negative time mean? A negative time means a time before the time of t equals zero. Time of t equals zero is the time when the rock was dropped. The rock is always the initial position. Uh, the object is always at its initial position at t equals zero. That was the assumption we made when we wrote the equations out. So a time before that means a time before it was dropped. Well, where was the rock before it was dropped? Well, could have been anywhere. Maybe it was on the, on the floor, or maybe it was in Brittany's pocket or something. We have no idea where it was. But the equations think that the rock is keeping a constant acceleration, even to negative times. The rock is not keeping a uniform acceleration to negative times. The rock is only going to have a uniform acceleration from the time it was dropped, right after it was released, until the time it hits the professor's head, at which point the acceleration is much more complicated. The only part of the motion where the acceleration is constant is between those two points, when it's dropped, when it hits his head. But the equations don't know that. The equations just think it's uniformly accelerated. It will tell you where that rock would be if it didn't hit his head and could just keep on moving down into the ground or something like that. Likewise, it will tell you where the rock would have been if the rock were just continuing on its motion before up here. Well, what would that have been like? Well, we know what the motion looks like before something uh, has a velocity of zero. If we toss something up, we know that it's zero up here and then starts to drop. Well, that's like the point where the rock was dropped. Before that time, the rock could have been moving upwards. So before that time, the rock would have been down at this time at 91.3, whoops, sorry, not that one, at, at 9.31 seconds before it was dropped. So imagine you could see the rock moving before it was dropped and after it hits the professor's head. It would have been coming up here, and then at t equals zero, it comes right up here and then falls down and then hits his head at 9.31 seconds. But 9.31 seconds before it reaches the top, top, it would be at a height of two meters. Then it's at zero up here, and then at two meters, 9.31 seconds later. So. Sometimes these unphysical, unrealistic solutions can tell us something important about the problem. So I'm always going to put the, even the unrealistic or unphysical solutions down because they can help us understand what's happening. And they can sometimes help us make sure that we didn't make a mistake because there are things that we can determine about the unrealistic solutions that if the unrealistic solutions don't even make sense, then we know we must have made a mistake. So even our unrealistic solutions should make sense if we could extend the motion outside of the realm of the actual physical problem. Very, very good. We have 
been looking at one-dimensional motion. What we're going to do next time is extend this to two dimensions and see where would this go even in three dimensions. Great. See you next time.